when I was a young assistant at the Istanbul University, uh, my professor uh, wanted me to work on a manuscript, which was made for the occasion of uh, circumcision of Murat the third uh, son. And that manuscript is at the Istam uh, Topkapı Museum Library. Uh, and I saw the manuscript, and it was really beautiful. And my professor loved it, loved that uh, manuscript and the miniatures. And he was very keen that you know I would do a proper work on it. Then it, that became my um, PhD thesis. Uh, I worked uh, on this manuscript for many years, but uh, I will not take too much of your time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in 1582, Murat the Third wanted to show off the wealth and the splendor of Ottoman Empire. But um, he was not a um, military type of sultan. Uh, he was very much interested in books, art, and culture. He was not that interested in architecture, but other things. So to show uh, the strength and uh, splendor of Ottoman Empire, he, he did not uh, organize a, a military campaign. But um, he, it's, instead, he wanted to organize something different. That was the uh, circumcision festival of uh, his son, Mehmet. It took 52 days and 52 nights. Uh, and uh, the preparations of this festival took more than a year. Uh, some sugar came from, and rice came <coughs> from uh, Egypt. You know, whatever you could get uh, the best product uh, from different corners of the empire, uh, they were all sent uh, to Istanbul for this festival. For this festival, all the Istanbul, uh, po the population of the uh, Istanbul, of, uh, Istanbul part participated. And whoever had a skill to show, you know, they, they got prepared to show their skill. And, uh, all the um, viziers and grand vizier and the viziers and high officials also um, uh, took a part in this organization. It was a big organization, you know, in, uh, in short. So uh, for this occasion, um, many, uh, many people, foreign and native, writers wrote, uh, described uh, this event. <coughs> and when you put them all together, you really uh, learn about this event properly. Uh, but there is only one manuscript, in fact, more than one, but one manuscript particularly made uh, to show this event from uh, day one till the, f uh, till the end of this uh, event. That is, it doesn't have a title in the book because, but uh, in general it is called Tsunami Humayun. Tsunami means uh, festival and or uh, book of, book of festival. Uh, Humayun is imperial, imperial festival. So uh, it was prepared so that two pages of text told the story in written, and the next two pages 
uh, a double page showed the event, one event. Uh, and uh, it was planned to have 250 uh, double page miniatures. Unfortunately, uh, some 70 more pages are missing. Uh, we know why, because that book was so popular uh, that, uh, you know, um, it was a, a little bit destroyed. And also, from some, uh, some drawings on the miniatures, we understand that, uh, you know, some children also looked at, looked and played. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but that is sweet. I mean, they, uh, they made some harm on the manuscript. But it is nice that you feel that it was really uh, uh, appreciated and looked and used. So let us start looking at these miniatures. By showing all these miniatures to you, not all, mm -hmm. <laughs> 250 miniatures you are not going to see, but some uh, details uh, of this. It, it shows the life in Istanbul in 1852. Uh, 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 so you know what, how they, what they used, what uh, furniture they had, what uh, goods they produced, everything, art and event and music and even food, you know, everything. So we find. Uh, some elements of the life in Istanbul in this book. Let us see. This is, uh, you know, sometimes I uh, talk too much and to, ha uh, to help you, <laughs> I put some text in there. Uh, you see um, Morat the Third on his uh, horse going to uh, to the uh, old uh, palace. Old, you know, they, because they, it is a big event, you know, it starts uh, with some uh, ceremonies. In the old palace, there is the um, mother of the Sultan. Uh, no, sorry, the grand uh, mother. So they go and visit and kiss the hand of the grand, uh, grand uh, mother, and then they will go to the uh, palace, Ibrahim Pasha Palace, which was prepared for this uh, for this occasion, uh, and he will stay there. But first, he goes to the old palace. The old palace was built during the time of Mehmet the Second, right after the uh, conquest of Istanbul. And uh, it was situated at the, on the site of Istanbul University of today. Okay. Now you see the, um, uh, the grand uh, no, uh, crown prince, Mehmet, who is um, on horse going into uh, the Ibrahim Pasha Palace. And as you see, some beautiful, um, <coughs> not carpets, these are um, beautiful fabrics. Gold and silver fabrics. Uh, this, this was a habit. Uh, when a sultan or uh, the crown prince or uh, the mother of the sultan uh, went to a place, they used to keep beautiful fabrics to uh, to put them on the floor uh, and uh, you know they, uh, the shoes of the horse may, would make some stamps on, on them and it was divided into pieces and uh, given to the uh, people who are serving so that was an old tradition that we see in here as well uh, this entrance is, uh, it exists 
today, but when you go to Hippodrome, uh, to Ibrahim Pasha Palace, you can not really see. But when you go, please stand a face to the Ibrahim Pasha Palace. Okay? You will see also the Kapu Dynasty. How we say it? Yes, Registry of Deeds. Uh, yeah, okay, that building. And on your right, you know, uh, at the rear, there is a little dome uh, and uh, supported by uh, some columns. It was the original entrance of the Ibrahim Pasha Palace. It is still there, but you know, it is in the corner and they filled uh, with Coca-Cola uh, bottles and they store them there. You can hardly see. Okay, let's go. So for this uh, occasion, uh, a lot of uh, uh, artificial trees, which were called nahl, uh, was prepared. Some of them were so big that when carrying them all uh, um, through the streets of Istanbul, because they were carried through the streets of Istanbul, so that people also uh, would feel the festival uh, atmosphere. Um, the, the houses were some, in some places were so close to each other uh, with their balcony and shark uh, or not balcony, uh, but shark um, machine, so that they were cut partly. Uh, because the owners of the houses would be very sorry about it, the, uh, the Sultan would pay, uh, would pay the owner uh, to have it uh, redone. So you see, they were all these, whatever you see here, all uh, the flowers and everything, are made of uh, colored wax and also uh, colored paper. Uh, so you see the nahls in here, and uh, they also prepare some figures made of candy, made of sugar. You know, you all know that in Islam, we don't have a, a sculpture. But these are small sculptures. How people did not, I mean, uh, how uh, th these sculptures were accepted. It is extremely interesting. But <laughs> if I tell you that, you know, the, after uh, they are shown, they would be distributed to the, uh, to the guests and they would be eaten up so they are destroyed in the end. <laughs> That's why you know, the artists could dare to create them. Okay, let's go. Now I'm showing you the Ibrahim Pasha Palace, uh, which is uh, now today serves as Turkish and Islamic Museum. And uh, this is the balcony you see from the uh, hippodrome. Uh, let, let us start with the hippodrome first. This is the obelisk. This is the uh, serpentine column. And this is another uh, column in here. Uh, this is the Ibrahim Pasha Palace. Okay. And Mehterhane. In here, this is a recep reception room behind this facade, and uh, today we have big, big carpets are displayed. And in here, you know, you see the windows are all red uh, painted, uh, and if you look at the miniature closely, you see that, you know, um, it shows uh, that they were lattice windows. So 40, uh, carriages uh, brought uh, 
harem woman uh, to this uh, to this palace, and they stayed all the, uh, you know uh, during the time of the festival, and uh, they could sit here and uh, saw uh, watch the uh, events and what's going on uh, in this area, and uh, behind this structure. On the left and on the left side and on the right side, there are two uh, two uh, entrances uh, of the uh, palace, uh, which were made uh, before uh, before this event, before uh, 1582. And for this occasion, when they prepared the, uh, the arena for, uh, for the festival, uh, the uh, admiral, admiral uh, had this structure, uh, made a wooden structure made for this event. Uh, these lodges uh, were for the dignitaries. And if you look at here, you see a different uh, figures with different hats. And here you have a detail. These are Christian uh, ambassadors. <laughs> um, so here we have the Sultan and his son and his uh, attendants, uh, courtiers, as you can see in this uh, detail. And what else? On, on this side, these two pages, this, um, uh, this setting is seen almost in every miniature painting in this manuscript. But of course, you know, the color of the uh, walls and all the details are different because the, uh, a big, um, a, a big uh, team of uh, painters worked on this big manuscript. So, you know, some 20 were given to one person, the other two, 20 to another person. And they decorated, they, they did all these decorations according to their taste and uh, their style. Uh, so that's why you know we have all these. This setting was decided uh, to be like this by the Nakash, by the head uh, painter Nakash Osman. So he uh, he decided that the um, people of Istanbul should be represented in this corner, and. Uh, people uh, who would attend the uh, festival would come from here, walk uh, in this direction, go in this direction, and under the balcony of the Sultan, they would pray to God for the health of the Sultan, and they would also present their uh, gifts. And in return, they would also uh, receive some money. And they will turn like this and, you know, leave the arena. Uh, so, before I forget, sometimes I forget the, the, the details. As you see, I, I, I've shown, I'm showing you another detail of this uh, people of Istanbul in here. And you see some whaled woman. Uh, I almost studied all the, mm, the Turkish miniatures, not uh, the, to only in the uh, Topkapı Museum Library or Istanbul University Library, but in other uh, libraries in the world too. And I never came across. Maybe I missed. But I, I don't remember seeing any uh, whaled woman before 
this uh, before this time, 1582. Uh, I assume that uh, this uh, fashion uh, came after uh, the conquest of of uh, Egypt in 1517, because in earlier times, you know, if we have time, I would talk about Turkish women in miniatures. <laughs> One day. <laughs> Um, you know, we, we don't see any weird woman. Uh, there are covered uh, women, but uh, they are old women. Old women uh, are covered, but the others were, are, were not. So, this is another talk. <laughs> if you want, if you insist, this <laughs> one day. <laughs> okay, let's go. So, you know, from time to time, uh, we have dancers and music, and whoever works on any, anything, you know, should consult this manuscript. If you work on musical instruments, you can find the images, you know, of the of all the different kinds of uh, musical instruments in this manuscript. This is a great source for uh, Ottoman culture, visual source. And dancers and um, uh, musicians come here from time to time. They come and, you know, uh, they, uh, they perform. Uh, yes. And from time to time, we have Karagos, shadow uh, puppet theater people, as you can see in this. Uh, what also they, uh, the people did is, uh, if, uh, if somebody had uh, slipper makers, men, uh, for instance, they would take their uh, they, they would make a model of their shop or atelier and they would maybe carry or they, uh, on wheels they would push to the uh, festival uh, uh, arena and show their goods. So in here we also have two tents and as you see all these people entertaining uh, the guests. Okay, let's go. Here we have uh, religious people. They are all in different uh, parts of the uh, manuscript. But in here I put them all together uh, to show them all to you. And here, uh, here say it, descendants of a uh, prophet. Mm. My grand grandfather, uh, was one of the uh, grand visions, Sadrazam Hasan Pasha, and he is called Sayyid. So that means descendant of the Prophet. But I think they bought this title. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there are some cases you have to be careful. <laughs> so, you know, when I realized one day a very religious, one of the religious uh, person at the university said, oh, Nurhan is a Sayyid. You know, I, I don't feel Sayyid at all. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but I think I, I did not study it really carefully, but uh, I learned that some, some, in most of the cases, these titles were bought. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so here we have Mu'azins and Imams and uh, different uh, religious uh, groups, representatives of uh, religious groups. Okay, let's go. And here you have, ah, uh, in the 16th century, during the time of uh, Söyle, <laughs> there were so many florists in Istanbul. 
and so many that they wanted to keep the number limited. There were more than 100. Uh, can you imagine, you know, when uh, before I uh, started working on flowers and gardens, I always thought that cut flower bouquet, you know, to give somebody, uh, was a uh, European tradition which we took. No. And uh, to put some uh, fresh flowers, cut uh, flowers, on the uh, graves. That was also an old Turkish tradition. So after working on this, I published a lot. Uh, and uh, you know, we are still learning. There are so much to learn about our art and culture. And here we have flower cellars, as you can see. But uh, we understand that flower cellars and fruit cellars were not divided. They always did, uh, they, they sold flowers together with, uh, with fruits. So you see all this, I mean, I don't need to show you. But here, as I told you, uh, one, uh, a man was very skilled in making paper uh, flowers, so he made a huge uh, tulip, paper tulip, and brought it to the uh, hippodrome, but unfortunately <laughs> it rained <laughs> and it was destroyed. <laughs> but the, the uh, original text, text of the manuscript, does not tell anything which was, not, um, uh, which was negative. But from other sources, of course, I worked, and this uh, sad thing was mentioned by by somebody else. Okay, let's go. Here we have gardeners. These uh, are very interesting because they brought, as uh, I told you, they brought their models uh, to the hippodrome, and from these models, we we can see. Uh, the type of uh, Ottoman gardens. And uh, as you see, uh, cypress trees were the main elements of an uh, Ottoman garden, as you can see here, and a water feature. <coughs> you, you know, it, it was a must. And also flower uh, beds, as you can see in here. And here we have also uh, uh, water feature and uh, uh, cypress trees. This is another type of uh, uh, garden, uh, you know, model brought on wheels. Uh, you see, you know, uh, a, an Ottoman garden wouldn't be without a cypress tree till the 19th century. In the 19th century, the uh, uh, European gar uh, gardeners were invited, and the uh, the taste of uh, the garden gardening changed, and they never uh, planted cypress trees. Uh, but uh, if they if there were some existed, they did not cut <coughs> cut off but uh, never uh, planted. And uh, by the time, only cypress trees uh, could be found in the cemeteries. Mm -hmm. So uh, in the modern times, uh, you know, uh, cypress trees are considered, considered as uh, uh, graveyard trees, but they were not. Okay, let's go. So, you know, he was, uh, this man was very skilled <laughs> dancing with his uh, donkey, so it was his skill, he, he showed his skill, and this man uh, settling his horse without using his hands, he, he, he tied his hands at his back, and you know, and here, that, that was a trick. You can see these were Christian 
uh, people and prepared a trick. And, uh, you know, they brought this um, whatever, box or whatever, uh, certainly bigger than a box chest. And uh, it was filled with straw. And there were pieces of bodies. And people were disgusted and afraid. And suddenly, four men jumped out. <laughs> they, they hid their bodies and showed only one part of their bodies. And uh, one, could, uh, one would think that, you know, uh, some. Yeah, some bodies cut uh, were in there, so it was a trick. Okay, let's go. Ah, Sibor, we have more gold. This, this, this is a Sibor. It is a, a, a imaginary a bird a made of paper. I mean, today we are not very much impressed because we see so many kites. Uh, in different shapes, but uh, can you imagine in those days uh, how uh, how admired this paper uh, kite? Okay, let's go. And war games from time to time, uh, uh, they made for war games, and uh, maybe some of you know about uh, the name. Matrak Chinnasu, uh, who, who made the uh, Istanbul depiction, a uh, representation of Istanbul, the oldest, what we have, uh, 14, 3, uh, 30, 34, I think I need the water. Uh, he was very skilled in making um, paper castles. He was skilled in many things. So it was a, an old tradition uh, to make uh, these castles made, made of uh, car cardboard. And of course, the wars were between uh, Turk, Ottomans, and uh, Frank, the Christians. And of course, Always the uh, Ottomans. Yeah. <laughs> yes, let's go. Uh, archery was a very popular uh, sport among the Ottomans, and there were some uh, exercise. Uh, how places where people could go and uh, uh, practice archery in many places. And there is also, uh, they were called Talimhane, and there is also, a, a, a still today, a, a, this a district called Talimhane. Um, and this game, we don't know, uh, uh, it doesn't exist anymore. And we don't know much about how it was played. And this is Matrak Oyun, we know about it. And that Matrak Nasuh, the painter, also is the inventor of this game. May I say something? Yes, I, I, I recognize that from, from medieval pictures in Europe, because I think you should aim with a, a spear on the shield, and then uh, you should take care because the puppet revolves and you uh, get your kick yes. in the head. Yes. Yeah. yes, and there are also some other aspects that uh, I believe uh, came from Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, because of war prisoners. I mean, I will, you are very right. Thank you. And let's go. This Christians of uh, Galata uh, prepared this mountain, um, as you see, many, with many uh, animals and so on. Um, but it was filled with uh, gunpowder. Uh, people were admiring it, and beautiful, and they were 
admiring the beauty of this mountain, but suddenly they blow up. <laughs> and uh, line uh, traders also uh, uh, had many uh, performances, and they would make the line fight with war. And of course, this was Ottoman Empire. Uh, as, uh, represented Ottoman Empire, and this is the Christian. And, and if if this uh, this fight uh, was won by the war, that uh, was a very bad sign. Mm -hmm. That you know they would lose a war against <laughs> Christians. <laughs> okay. Let's go. Oh, of course, um, uh, uh, horse was also very important in the lives of uh, Turks, uh, as well as uh, Ottoman Turks, uh, too. And um, there were many uh, shows to show the, the skill of, uh, to show uh, their skills on horseback. Uh, today, of course, you know, you go to a, a circus and you see a lot of tricks and a lot of uh, uh, skills. So it's not very impressive, but in, in 1582, uh, I'm sure it, uh, they were very impressive. Okay, let's go. Ah, now we have, here we have cooks. It was, a, you know, a very modest uh, restaurant, uh, and also kebab. You see, shish kebab, etc. <laughs> if anybody says that, you know, shish kebab is not Ottoman, <laughs> I just would show this <laughs> butcher. And uh, here we have a coffee house. We also have another coffee house miniature. Uh, in a manuscript, in a Turkish manuscript, in uh, Dublin, Chester Beatty Library. But this is also very nice. And here, you know, they are playing a game. Uh, I was given a gift, a box, mandala. 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 And uh, the gentleman who gave it to me said, uh, we saw this is Mandala. Mm -hmm. uh, he took uh, these uh, figures and used on the box. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason uh, that he brought that box to me as a gift, because he took the figures from my book. Yeah. And that was really very sweet, but I did not know about this game, and uh, then I opened up and I learned something. I'm very happy about it. Okay, let's go. And sherbet makers, these are all silver, and here we have a sugar dealer, and these conical uh, sugar uh, pieces were um, alive uh, even uh, till my childhood in Erzurum and so on. Uh, they had little hammers to break them and uh, they would take a little piece of sugar, put down in mm -hmm. between uh, their cheek and uh, uh, teeth and drink, drink tea. <laughs> or coffee. So it is, uh, here we have, we have Memounier. Uh, these are all studied by Mary, Mary Ushen, in a wonderful book he published, she published. And uh, here we have Halwa and uh, fruit jelly makers and poultry sellers. Uh, you know, as I've told you, they brought their 
uh, ateliers or shops or whatever uh, they had uh, to the to the uh, festival era. So they they brought all Istanbul life in this uh, festival. Let's go. Fruit seller. And we have all the dirhams, the way and the uh, scale and so on, and how how they organized, how they arranged their uh, uh, shops. Here we have green grocer, and as you can see, they have a little Yes, like today. Yes, let's go. Uh, so a lot of uh, entertainment also uh, goes on, <coughs> as you can see uh, in here. And I shouldn't go into detail. We have many more. But you know, when you look at the details, you enjoy more. Mm -hmm. OK, let's go. So snake, uh, snake charms. There is a man in this battle uh, with lots of uh, snakes. They roll the uh, barrel and uh, the man uh, comes up uh, without being bitten by any snake. And you know, a lot of shows, uh, you see his, his upper part of his body uh, is bare, and he put his uh, clothing in here, mm -hmm. and uh, he has he, he carries a lot of snakes. So the dog, uh, some show with the dog, and the birds. They have you. You see, they have. They are doing this. They have whistles. They whistle and they encourage the uh, birds to sing. Mm -hmm. OK, let's go. Mm -hmm. here, here is the uh, glassmakers. You know, when I was young, you know, it was believed that uh, Ottomans used only imported glass uh, because we have very, very, very little uh, glass uh, came to our day, Ottoman glass came to our day. And uh, because of this, they, they, it was believed among the art historians that, you know, they were, uh, the Ottomans used imported glass. But here, here you are, you have <laughs> uh, glass makers. Um, so that was wrong. And uh, the reason why nothing came down to our day is, you know, because the houses were all wooden houses. And uh, it is an earthquake yes. country. And uh, fires and earthquakes during these uh, two uh, events, you know, nothing uh, really. Uh, okay, uh, they were all broken. So for my ISDIC book, I studied the, uh, uh, the fires of Istanbul and made some um, in, in the Ottoman history. Uh, and uh, on a map, I said, for <coughs> instance, 152 uh, earthquake, which part of the uh, of the city was gone, and in, uh, later on, later on, and uh, you know, yeah, on um, transparent paper, and put them. <laughs> there was no place which did not have a fire. Mm. They were all renewed. Mm -hmm. They were gone and renewed. Uh, in the 15th century, uh, the fires were so bad that uh, 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 Suleiman the Magnificent made a uh, law that who 
start who um, where a, a fire starts they ha they had to find the owner of the place and should be executed <laughs> because there were so many uh, fires in the city but what happened after this uh, he uh, he established this law <laughs> in the old palace there was a fire and he was himself the owner of the house <laughs> <laughs> okay. and here potters I, that's for that I'm sorry here we have potters this is uh, you know this is the work uh, an additional work of a child <laughs> to the manuscript, as you can see. <laughs> and uh, here Miller's, uh, Mill, Miller, Miller's, and so on. All this. OK, let's go. And slipper maker. You know, if uh, anybody is interested in um, tools used in the old days, you know, they have to look at this. And uh, young ones carry their uh, their products, their uh, uh, slippers, and uh, you know the the master and the uh, assistant are working uh, in, a, uh, in a shop. And here we have the uh, uh, value makers and so on, and. You see these uh, soft boots, and the, all the tools also can be seen. I was crazy enough to work on the, the shoes and boots um, at the top couple, and uh, I I made the cut patterns of them. So if you want to create <laughs> an ultimate boot or a, a soft boot or a shoe, I have I have all the. <laughs> <laughs> I published. <laughs> I haven't made any yet. <laughs> okay. Because they they have got a very interesting uh, cut. Okay. So. They also, fishmen, also wanted to participate, but uh, they could not bring the sea into the arena, <laughs> but uh, they could bring their boat, uh, boats and, uh, you know, sh make uh, shows in there. And the herdsmen, it is not that difficult. And you see these drawings, it isn't that nice, you know, a prince, maybe princess, wanted uh, to feed them <laughs> and draw something, some leaves or something. Okay, let's go. Here, mule uh, drivers, uh, and uh, in, the, in the text it says they filled the arena with noise because there were bells and all the bells were you know, ringing uh, and they made a lot of noise and you see all these hawks here uh, figures and here we have uh, blacksmiths working uh, showing their skill and also the uh, camel uh, drivers uh, it was really very fast. <laughs> okay, let's go. So, every evening, when you read this text, it says it lasted 52 days and 52 nights. Because every evening, there, there were fireworks. Uh, and uh, because it was very, it is still, I think, very expensive, uh, uh, one night uh, would be Ahmed Pasha's evening, so he would pay. And uh, the next uh, evening would be somebody else's. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, second wazir, third wazir, and so on. And uh, here these are all filled with 
fireworks and uh, they would be blown up. Now, look at this. These figures. I was in Krakow and they made a show and they brought uh, a man came with a horse. And I thought of this, oh, unfortunately I didn't have my camera. I should have, uh, you know, maybe they took it from here or, or the other, other way around. It is, it is not easy to tell, but it doesn't matter. But there is a connection. And uh, as you can see, there are also some figures, some deals and Frank, and uh, they would be blown off. <laughs> Some other, uh, this uh, fan, uh, and this is mirror makers. You know, if they would bring the mirrors like this, it would be very dull. So they created uh, beautiful uh, stars. Okay, let's go. As I've told you, you can find anything in this manuscript. As uh, you can see, he is looking how you know how straight it is. Or uh, this uh, master is making a sword, and uh, these are nice <coughs> methods. And uh, uh, bow, bows, not bows, arrows, and rifle makers. Rifle came in uh, into Ottoman. Uh, life uh, during the time of Suleiman the Magnificent, but uh, Genesis hated the guns, and uh, you know first they broke them. You know, later they got used to. Yeah, okay, let's go. They preferred uh, arrow and uh, uh, arrow instead of uh, guns. These are Kemha makers, so they made, they exhibited their uh, Kemhas like this. And th here is Kaftan maker. He displays his Kaftans like this. And uh, he is a Beget trouser maker. It says, you know, that they, uh, he started making one um, um, when entering the uh, Hippodrome. And uh, during this, at the end of his tour, mm -hmm. he, he made it, he finished it in a very perfect way. Mm -hmm. He was so skilled. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go. Ah, these birds <laughs> are, um, are made, uh, folded, uh, uh, folded uh, bath wrappers. Mm -hmm. And they were made in, in, in such a way that, you know, by a rope they would pull and the wings would move all hands. Uh, so here uh, is a barber. And so let's go. And here felt makers. I have a friend uh, in New York who works on felt and I've given, uh, given her these images mm -hmm. uh, for her research. And I, I never heard that a cat would be taught a, a, a skill. Uh, here you have two cats and they were, uh, they were trained to walk on the, uh, on the rope. They, maybe they can walk, but and for a show, how they would be trained, <laughs> I cannot tell. Different way of catwalk. Different way of catwalk. Catwalk. Okay. And here you have a man here, and uh, there is a, a big block on his uh, tummy, and uh, they are uh, these men are making uh, hammering. Uh, was it? 
uh, was it cauldron? They are making cauldron, uh, copper cauldron or something. But uh, on his tummy. So strong muscles. Okay, let's go. And here, ah, these are sakas, watermen. They, they had a, a lot of uh, work to do. Um, they, they would carry some uh, uh, bags <coughs> full of water or oil. Um, they were responsible to clean the floor of the hippodrome every day. And uh, because it was uh, soiled, uh, they had to water the, uh, uh, the ground and then sweep. And also, you know, they, they had funny hats, funny hats and so on. Uh, they were responsible uh, to keep the order of the uh, uh, festival arena, arena. If anybody did not behave well, you know, with their own, they were like a uh, uh, clown. clown. Mm -hmm. And uh, with their funny um, costumes, they would go and punish the person who, who would not, uh, who was doing something wrong. And by <coughs> doing this, they wouldn't uh, disturb the atmosphere of the, uh, of the uh, festival. Uh, sometimes they would pour some oil or some sometimes water and so on. They were very important uh, and you see different types. Sometimes, you know, they would um, uh, tease uh, the people and so on. Uh, very funny, funny but very functional group of people. So, this is a, a banquet given to the high officials, as you see in here. But every day, the, the sultan gave food to the, uh, to the uh, public. And uh, the, uh, the ground would be cleaned, and all this food would be prepared. Then they would say, come, and hurrah, the <laughs> people would go and uh, have their food. So, okay, let's go. And there was another, which I don't like this, this page, because they brought two, uh, maybe more, I can't remember, uh, roasted oxen. And it for the public, and they would eat meat, and they had it, and when they started uh, taking pieces, suddenly from the inside of these uh, animals, live animals came out, <laughs> uh, foxes, uh, dogs, uh, birds, and so on, and poor people, you see, <laughs> the man uh, with a piece of meat, and it, they, they were so much afraid of uh, having all these live animals. But poor people, you know, it is a little bit not fair. <laughs> That's why I don't like. It. I don't like it. You see a detail in the end. <coughs> Okay, let's go. So uh, even today. Uh, uh, in Anatolia, uh, some rich men would have their uh, sons circumcised uh, with, a, uh, with a party. But uh, on this occasion, they would also invite uh, other people, especially poor people, to bring their boys to, to have uh, circumcised um, yeah, with his uh, son. Uh, this, this tradition is still alive. And in the old days, it was the case as well. And uh, these are all, uh, all these clothes 
uh, and these are boys. By the way, uh, and you see the little boys, they are not only circumcised, free, but also they would be given all the clothing. Uh, may I tell you a story about circumcision? Mehmet, Mehmet uh, Crown Prince Mehmet, who, who will be uh, Mehmet III, was circumcised at the age of 17. Oh, oh, I said, you know, when I learned, I said, oh my God, you know, he is a man. And I started asking people <laughs> at what age they were circumcised. And I visited an old gentleman on the Bosphorus who had, who, you know, uh, the, the son of a Nazir, uh, Pasha, and um, he showed me a lot of things very interesting. I shouldn't be talking about all this. But he, I asked him, I had a friend with me, an architect friend with me, and I suddenly said, Efendim, at what age? <laughs> <laughs> and he's, he said, I'm not circumcised. I mean, he was a peer's man, because I asked him, uh, if he remembered uh, the death of uh, her mother, if they put a piece of uh, cloth with inscriptions on the coffin or you know, I was asking about this and he said one minute and he uh, disappeared and came back uh, the, uh, with a piece of uh, fabric uh, which came from Kaaba. Mm cover. But the, it was wrapped um, in seven layers of a bundle. Okay. And he brought it like this with, with such a respect that you, you understand that, you know, he is a respectful man, but not circumcised. <laughs> I couldn't understand. Um, he said, my father was a very modern-minded man, and uh, he said, this is a very barbarous thing to do, and I'm not going to have my son circumcised. So, you know, very interesting. I find it very interesting. <laughs> I think Murat III wanted to create a big event, use this circumcision, and wanted to find the right time. And in the meantime, the son became 17. <laughs> okay. Ah, here, you see this is, uh, uh, there is another manuscript at Istanbul uh, University Library, which tells a part, tells about the events uh, during the time of Murat III. And there are some miniatures devoted to this uh, festival. And in that festival, you know, the, these poor boys are sure <coughs> being cut. <laughs> oh. uh, here, because um, Sultan wanted everybody to be very happy, so uh, he ordered to have all the uh, prisoners from the jail brought who, who were there uh, for their deaths. And uh, they are brought in here, and all their debts are paid by the Sultan, and they were so that they could be free. Is there also a woman over there? Yes, there is. Yes. Interesting. You know, we also get some debts. <laughs> uh, and in here, we have all the uh, beggars. So they were. Everybody, uh, you know, uh, uh, were, were happy at the end of this festival. Let's go. And 
we see the Sultan only once standing in the balcony when he is throwing uh, uh, gold and silver coins. Also in the text it says um, some uh, silver balls and so on, silver um, things, not only coins, but in here. Uh, it, it, and and um, also he, he also gave robe of honor to the people who served uh, very well for the festival. Here you see. And when it is given as a robe of honor, it, they are called hilat. These are uh, kaftans. <coughs> I think this is the end. I, ca I can tell <coughs> more about yeah. this festival, but uh, I don't want to abuse your uh, patience. <laughs> <laughs>